Okay, welcome back to chapter 11. We are on page 2 and we're doing this little example that I put in. So, our sub is in Mexico and here's different aspects about it and you had to decide if it was integrated or self-sustaining. So, sales and inputs are in pesos or the cur the um inputs come from Mexico or all the sales are in Mexico. So, which does that lead you to believe? So that's sales and operating costs, because operating costs can also be thought of as inputs. That, foreign countries or Mexican, that is going to be self-sustaining. All the competitors are foreign. So you look at competition, competition foreign entities rather than Canadian, so it's self-sustaining. Financing comes from Canadian company. So financing, the parent provides cash, so this is integrated. The surplus is in pesos. So operating surplus in pesos. So that would be staying. Only goods imported from the parent are sold. So that's the extension of the parent. Parent has sent upper management to run up. Well, how much autonomy is that sub going to have? Not much. So it's going to be integrated. Parent provides cash for operations. So that's part of the financing cash flows here. So it's kind of related to financing in Canadian dollars. Um, so that's going to be, they provide cash for operations. So that's going to be um, integrated. And the cash flows affect the parent. So cash flows directly affect. So, obviously this takes a great deal of uh, professional judgment and practice with this kind of thing. Um, generally, this is our primary. Sometimes, though, these can override. If all these were integrated and these were up here, you might think they were more integrated. Now, what happens sometimes is a company will buy another company in another country. Send pay for them, manage everything, their operations and stuff. And they might start off integrated, but slowly move to self-sustaining. So that can happen. Or they move to self-sustaining to become more integrated because they're doing many more trends with the parent, which um, shrinks their market in terms of foreign competitors. So with this one, there's a lot more that were integrated than self-sustaining. However, the self-sustaining ones were the big ones. Sales prices and markets, operating costs and inputs, competition. Now it wasn't financing, so financing isn't there, and operating surpluses. So it was just number four that wasn't. So I'd say they're moving to uh, self-sustaining but you could have argued because the parent is doing so down here it could also be integrated so it could also on an exam either one would be right as long as you defended your answer um, a question like this wouldn't be tied with the next part where we numbers because if you pick the wrong thing, your numbers are going to be all wrong. So this would be a separate um, question, kind of an essay type question because they have those on, um, what's that called, connect for the phone. So it would probably be, in, you know, giving this kind of information except in a nice pretty paragraph and then you'd have to say, you know, 
give me three factors that shows it's integrated or that it's self-sustaining or which do you think it is and give me three factors that defend it something like that so that's deciding what the functional currency of a foreign operation is and then whether they're integrated or self-sustaining so that we can translate their foreign currency financial statements into Canadian. So on page three, we talk about the FCT, just remembering it's for integrated operations and it's also called the temporal method. So, because they're integrated, we translate as if the underlying transactions had occurred in Canada in the first place. So the rules is chapter 10. Foreign exchange gains and losses are in net income, and you can go through examples one to four in your text. PCT method is also called the current rate method. Is used for self-sustaining operations, unless it's in a high highly inflationary economy, which you can read about in the appendix to chapter 11. It is not testable. Foreign exchange gains and losses are recorded in OCI. Go through example next. So here's a summary of the rules. So it's a nice little um, summary that you can refer to. So if we're using FCT, so this is FCT, so functional currency, it's for integrated operations. Rotation currency, or PCT, translation is the T, is for self-sustaining. So let's talk about the FCT rules first. Monetary items, if you remember from chapter 10, they have a right or obligation to be converted to monetary. So only monetary are reported at closing rate. Non-monetary, so they're at cost or amortized cost, uses historical rate. Non-monetary at fair values, so for example, property plant and equipment method. Follow note one, the rate on the date the fair value was determined should be used. And it's usually year end. So that's the rate you would use. Goodwill is historical. Revenues is historical. Common shares are when issued. And that is also historical. Dividends when declared and that's at historical revenues expenses interest etc are at historical depreciation and amortization so this one's a little different so you have to be careful If you look down here, for depreciation, the historical rate for FCT is the rate when the asset was acquired. But it, when the expense was incurred for uh, PCT, but we'll think of that later. So it's when asset acquired. Now, cost of sales, we're gonna have to do a little calculation. We're going to have one rate for opening inventory, one rate for purchases, and it's usually average. And one for ending inventory. So those are all three different rates. Now, <coughs> the last thing I want to talk about is this guy right here. Revenues, expenses, interest. Use the average rate if it's stated 
that they were equally during the year. Okay, so that is the integrated. So, no here with integrated, monetary is at closing. Pretty much everything else is a historical. Now, we see a different idea with PCT. All assets and liabilities are at closing. Equity, which of course includes revenues and expenses, at historical. So monetary would be at closing, non-monetary would also be at closing because they're assets. Um, non-monetary um, at fair value, so present um, property, plant, and equipment revaluation would be the same. It would be the date the fair value was determined. Now, deferred revenues, it's an asset or liability, it's closing. Common shares, don't worry, I'm sorry I missed around along here. I should have a drawn lines. Goodwill's at closing, deferred revenues at closing, common shares are when issued, so that's article. Um, Dividends when declared, historical. Revenues, expenses, and interest, also historical, use average if stated. Now, depreciation is different. So this is depreciation. If you look down here, FCT, the rate when the asset was acquired, but for peace and the expense was incurred. So, when expense incurred, so it's usually average. Now, cost of sales is easy in PCT. It's all historical, just one rate. Now, I do add one little thing down. I want to add foreign exchange gain or loss under integrated or FCT, it goes net income. And under PCT, it goes into OCI. So use this rule book when we're going through problems. Okay, and on the next video, we will start uh, part D and go through some examples.